Starting with X and continuing with Pearl, Ty West has created a solid set of films heavily influenced by cinema of the past. While the first film took on exploitation films of the 70s, and the second one took inspiration from Technicolor movies from the 30s and 40s, this newest entry, Maxine, takes the root of an 80s slasher film, with some Brian De Palma thrown in as well. While the weakest of the three films, there is some entertainment value as Wes takes us through his version of Hollywood and explores the title character trying to change her acting career around. That's where the movie is at its most interesting, surprisingly more than the murderer plot. Wes seeks to recreate the 80s, although it does not fully attempt to replicate the style of that decade's horror movies. There's a surprising lack of grime and dirt that categorize a lot of the horror associated with the 80s. It's mostly through the production design and other little references that he draws from the period. The title character's arc of wanting to move away from a pornographic film career and become a more legitimate actress provides the most interesting theme of the movie and nicely reflects how other adult film stars sought to do the same. That creates intrigue in whether she accomplishes this, and the best scenes involve her on the studio lot and her interactions with Elizabeth Debicki's tough director. Mia Goff continues to play the role well, even if Maxine is not as instantly iconic as Pearl is. We see someone trying so hard to break through and catapult her career to new heights, but a past trauma from X continues to have a lasting effect. Goff does a good job of depicting her overconfidence, as well as her continual survival mode and the other dimensions to the character. There's also the expected commentary on Hollywood and its treatment of actresses, although this is not as much of a focal point as the kills. West goes for the familiar elements of the slasher film as we watch a masked killer go through victims. There are the usual stabbing scenes, although there are points where he and his makeup team get creative. He attempts to connect this mystery plot with Maxine's Hollywood storyline, but the latter is a lot more interesting. Kevin Bacon has an entertaining role as a private investigator, and one of the best scenes in the movie is when he gives chase after Maxine. However, once we see where the story leads, there's a feeling of, that's it, and one begins to wonder what could have been a stronger conclusion. For those looking for pure thrills, Maxine's an entertaining enough ride, although it's at its best a study of Hollywood. Her arc of trying to avoid typecasting makes her character worth following, and one could draw parallels to other actresses like Tracy Lords, who sought to also make the jump from pornography to big Hollywood productions. The mixing of that storyline with the slasher movie does not entirely gel, although Mia Goff carries the movie well enough. After the immense creativity of Pearl, this film does feel like a step down, but it's nonetheless a noble attempt from Ty West to pay tribute to the filmmakers of decades past who have so clearly influenced him.